Hello guys, welcome. So, here at Kingshorn Lock, we managed to find the uh, the Fife Earth ship. We're taking some rather adventurous roads to get down here, so a little bit more than dirt tracks. But uh, girlfriend's little mini managed to get us down here all right. And can I just say, what an absolutely fantastic setting. Absolutely stunning. Beautiful place for a beautiful project. I'm just taking a wander down the side of the lock here, heading down towards where the project itself is running. Absolutely beautiful. This earthship itself is actually using three different methods for energy generation and we're actually coming up on the primary source now with our uh, weather being as it is in this country the primary source of power for this earthship is actually hydro so you've got a little 600 watt hydro generator there actually generates about 70% of the power for this earthship and uh, with the rain in this country being rather ubiquitous seems like the ideal source of energy for such a project whereas uh, out, out in towers in New Mexico solar is their main source of energy having much more sunlight than us water is going to be a decent source as a primary uh, a power generation system for our own earth ships in this country. We've got loads of land here as well. Something very cool. Got plenty of space for, you know, growing uh, crops and things like that. And you used to combine these earth ships with uh, sort of aquaponic setups and traditional farming as well. On top of that, there's, uh, you know, almost no limit to the amount of food that you can generate. If you do it in the right way. He's got your poly tunnel over there, like a fairly traditional sort of greenhouse setup. And then this jobby over here, made with all the old uh, plastic bottles, is actually the, the black water bed. So all the waste water from the earth ship itself, from the toilets, actually comes in here. And uh, Helps the, the plants in, in here grow. Processes and cleans it all before it returns to the environment. Rather cool. There's the black water bed. This is all about keeping everything as self-contained as possible. Here is the, the main building itself. A little yurt on the side there as well. I think it's used as a meeting house. Have a quick nosy at that now. I say the, uh, the visitor centre itself isn't actually open at the minute. So if you do come down, make sure you don't do what we do and just uh, turn up hoping do you need to give them a call in advance in this little meeting room apparently this summer last year there was a lot of damage done here from local yobs drinking and uh, trashing the place which is a bit of a shame now here's the earthship itself in the front here you've got uh, a greenhouse it acts as a, a sort of trap for a lot of the heat and uh, in the full size models this is the area that you would use to uh, grow food, help supplement yourself. All the grey water which is stuff that was used from washing mainly used by the uh, sort of washing the dishes, washing your hands, that sort of thing. The shower would all then go into here. This is the grey water processing and would clean all the water out and the water would then be fed back into your toilet which you would flush and that would send it then to the um, to the black water processing outside 
We'll see if we can get close enough to see this. Not sure what the glare's going to be like. Not sure if you can see this, but actually inside there is a little window. Shows you the sort of internal construction. Got these layers of tyres. Some of the gaps filled in with old cans and bottles and then uh, all cemented up. Actually acts as a little office and visitor centre. dedication plaque up there. Let's take a wander around the side. Again you can see a little bit better here how the earthship itself was constructed. The layered tyres packed with dirt and then they're all faced up with cement like you can see there. I'll take a wander around the back and up on top and then just show you a little bit of the water um, system. Yeah, you can see the roof there and the way it sort of slopes down to the middle there and down again. There's PV panels on top there. And then up on the top of the hill there you can see we've got uh, a little windmill that provides about 20% of the power for the whole uh, project. The solar panels there, about 10%, and then the water wheel that I showed you earlier, about 70% of the power. Again, it's all about adapting these things to your climate. Obviously, we don't have as much sun in this country, so we do need to supplement it quite heavily with uh, things like the water wheel and the wind turbine. See the gutter in there, bringing all the water over to here, and this is your uh, your water sump. A little gravel filter on top. There's rainwater collection. This is what's used to flush all the toilets and uh, if you're drinking water and things like that. See down there, a water container. Very interesting. Chickens over there. Just a really nice idea of uh, how these projects sort of look to bring all our technology in line with nature. And to say synchronize, I suppose, but to symbio uh, sim <laughs> develop some sort of symbiosis in our environment. PV panels up the top there. Now I believe, just looking at the design here, these windows themselves would probably like to be sloped a little bit more. You want to try and get these windows sloped to the angle of uh, incoming winter sun. Again, the idea being that you can uh, get the sunlight to, uh, to warm up the walls of the building itself and that's what helps contain a lot of the, the heat via um, thermal mass, they call it. All in all, a very, very interesting little project. And one I'm very happy to show you. Very pleased that we've been able to get out here and see this today. Extremely proud that a project like this are going on in this country. And one all the way up here in the north of uh, Britain. And one all the way down in Brighton in the south. Perhaps my own airship can be the next one. Again, it's a lot smaller than the Brighton model. I'll have to uh, get down to Brighton and have a look at that, do some filming there for you, give you a chance to sort of see the difference between the two projects. Very pleased anyway that we've got a chance to see this. If you want to find out more about these sorts of projects, head over to YouTube and look up Garbage Warrior. It's filmed by Michael uh, Reynolds. The, uh, the pioneer of these ideas. It's got a whole community in Taos in New Mexico where they're uh, all living out of uh, these style of houses, experimenting with new designs all the time, finding ways to improve it. Very interesting.
And if you want to get involved in a project like this, please come and find me on Facebook. You can find us at the UK Transition Network. Got a few people in this group now who are interested in setting up our own colony or community of such buildings. Our own dorm and visitor centre, our own little uh, sort of homes. Place where we can show people a better way of living. And that's more in tune with the nature. It's much more low impact, but at the same time, still having access to the modern in amenities which we've all grown to love and appreciate. Anyway, you can find more from me at fanfareforthaconscious.blogspot.co.uk As I mentioned before, you can find us on Facebook at the UK Transition Network. And you can find me on YouTube. Look for Rick Paris. Anyway been a pleasure showing this to you today hope you all have a, a wonderful day hope this has inspired you somehow um, and all that leaves me to say is uh, namaste